Hey there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. I'm your host Patson and today we're gonna be taking a look at r slash am I the asshole where OP did her ex-husband a huge favor. Let's begin. Am I the asshole for encouraging my ex-husband to take a DNA test and potentially destroying his family? Posted by Reddit user Feisty Report 368 me and my ex-husband, James, tried for almost seven years to have a baby. James was someone who didn't like going to the doctor to solve fertility things and believed it should be in a natural way, without medicine. He even encouraged me not to have an annual checkup at the gynecologist. During those years, he blamed me for being infertile and that I was unable to have our children. Toxic relationship, I know. We broke up after a huge fight in which he accused me of being a sterile bitch. The plot twist of the story is that, after meeting my current husband and we started trying, because of various comments from James in the past, I soon decided to solve my fertility problem. To my big shock, everything is healthy and I could have had a child for years probably, and when I talked about my past trying to conceive, the doctor pointed out the possibility of James' infertility, which makes sense. I have three children, four, four, and two. James and I still have mutual friends and have already met after the divorce, but since I moved out of town, I hadn't seen him in about three years until recently, at a kid's party for my friend's son. I met up with James and we started talking, currently we have an okay relationship, no hard feelings. He said he was engaged and had a seven-month-old son. I said that I had three children and he said something that would be, I'm happy for you, you managed to solve your infertility and got your family. I just gave him a giggle and told him, honey, infertility wasn't on my side, I was able to have kids with you too. The matter died therum, and I went to another corner of the party. Yesterday I got a random call from an unknown number, when I answered it was the fiancé, ex now, yelling at me, that I had meddled in my ex's life, and encouraged him to take a DNA test, which came out of not being a father, and now James has called off the wedding. She said I destroyed their family, by meddling in their lives. My friends said I shouldn't have intruded. I didn't encourage it, it was a normal conversation and he didn't even reply to this. Am I the asshole? You're not the asshole at all, OP. All you did is to tell him you didn't have any infertility issues. What he did with that information is all on him. You didn't ruin his family. In fact, you saved him from being married to a woman who cheated on him and is committing paternity fraud. Look, I understand guys may not want to think that they have infertility issues, but getting checked before trying for a child would have saved a lot of stress and problems. Your ex-husband should have just dropped his pride and gotten himself checked instead of just blaming you. OP, your ex and his fiance are both assholes, and they truly deserve each other. Today's second story is from r slash relationships. My close friend got really angry with me for refusing to sleep with him. Posted by Reddit user Monstera Plant. I met my friend Mark a few years back and we hit it off really well from the get-go. Originally, we were talking with the potential of dating, but after he tried to kiss me, I realized I only saw him as a friend. Despite that he was understanding of how I felt and we continued to be really close friends for the next four to five years. He works from home so he has a lot of free time, and over the past few years, I would regularly call him once a week, several times a week. We'd end up talking for hours about our lives, current partners and just general things. Because we've been friends for so long, over the course of time, I've talked with a lot of the traumatic things I've been through, including abusive ex-boyfriends and sexual assaults. Through all these things he's been amazingly helpful, and I've always felt like he cared and was someone I trusted. I've listened to and given him advice about similar traumatic things and mental health issues. I really value this relationship due to the things we've trusted each other to bring up and the amount of time I've known him. I moved to a different state a little over a year ago and have had a lot of trouble making close friends in my new location. So, our usual one to two times a week phone calls turned into an everyday, multiple times a day occurrence. Our conversations stayed the same level of friend level, and we still regularly talked about the people we were dating or the dates we've gone on. Because we both talked about people we were into, and we never had any romantic conversations, I assumed that we were both on the same page. I ended up taking a week off of my job to visit my family and friends, and he was the first person I told. We had talked about hanging out when I came back for Christmas multiple times, so I was excited to hang out with him earlier than that. But, 
The very first thing he said after I told him I was visiting was, hey we should hook up while you're here. I tried to brush it off, but he kept insisting, so I eventually told him flat out, no, I'm not interested in that. And that's when he started to get angry with me. He demanded to know why I wouldn't, and I awkwardly explained that I wasn't interested in hooking up with a friend or someone in general that I wasn't dating. To this he responded, okay then let's date for a day, or does it have to been a whole week fine with me? I mentioned that I didn't want to ruin the friendship I had with him. He said that was bullshit and then mocked my past relationships by saying, so you would have sex with them, and how did that turn out for you? Where are they now? Do you even talk to any of them? The more I tried to explain that I only saw him as a friend, the more upset he became. He'd regularly comment, I respect your feelings about this, but, and then go into more reasons why me refusing to hook up with him was bullshit. He then began to hound me to answer what I thought his dick looked like to which I responded, I have no idea, I've never thought about it or you in that way. He then said, well it's big, so fuck you. Screw me for wanting to hook up with someone I like talking to. It would have been really nice. I guess I'll just go fuck some random girls on Tinder instead, so fuck you I ended the call shortly after that. This happened a few days ago, and I have no one I can talk to about this, because I've grown distant from all my other old friends after moving, and don't feel close enough to talk about this with the people I know here. Throughout the day I kept thinking, oh I need to talk to Mark about what just happened to me, I'm so upset, and then quickly realizing Mark was the person who did that and wasn't the person I could go to for help. It really hurt because my only thoughts about it have been wondering if every time he's been talking to me and the times he's comforted me have all been an attempt to just get me to sleep with him. It feels really awful to trust someone so much to the point where you tell them about sexually harassment you've gotten regularly from men just for him to turn around and do the exact same. It's also hard because after not talking to him for a few days, I realize how much I relied on him socially because I haven't hung out with or talked to anyone else since. I know the easy answer is to cut him off, but that's a really hard thing to do with someone who's been there for you for so much. I feel alone without my friend, but too betrayed to reconcile with him. He hasn't reached out, and I don't think he even realizes what he said was wrong. But I'm too upset to talk to him or explain how I feel. I'm not sure where to go from here. The obvious answer is to ditch him, but we've been friends for years, it's hard to throw the ball away for one 20-minute phone call. You know, OP, the thing is, you are not ditching the friendship because of a 20-minute phone call. You would be ditching it based on who he really is, what he said to you, and what is essentially betrayal of your years-long friendship. All in the name of getting in your pants. <laughs> Man, some guys are just truly desperate. Look, there isn't really a way back from what he said. Sounds like he was playing the long game. But a friend wouldn't talk to you that way. A friend will not demand sex from you because he thinks you owe it to him. OP, when you're missing the person that you talk to every day, I just want you to remember that that person doesn't exist. He wasn't real. It was all an act. He was just pretending to be that person for you so that he could have sex with you. Look, for your own safety, please cut him off. He thinks he is entitled to your body and you have no idea what he's capable of anymore. Good luck and be careful, OP. Today's final story is from r slash surviving infidelity. Why is it up to me, the person who was cheated on, to make all of the decisions? Posted by Reddit user Sunny Brex. I've been silently reading posts here and on other subs and there's something that I keep seeing that I just don't understand. People tell cheaters, yes, work on yourself, etc. but let your partner decide whether or not they want to reconcile and follow that decision. And I get it. In a lot of cases, the betrayed spouse wants to separate, and it is best that the wayward spouse follows that due to how toxic some situations are. I'm a betrayed spouse. I love him, married him, had kids with him, was faithful to him. So obviously, I wanted this to work. He's the one who decided that I wasn't enough and that some other woman was more worth his time than me. So why is it up to me to show him my cards when really, I don't know I know his? Why is it up to me to be vulnerable again and say I choose you, please choose me too, when there's already been instances of him not choosing me? And yes, separation could sound like the easier option because why be with someone you don't trust? 
But I thought that was the whole point of reconciliation? Trying to build that trust back? The wayward spouse working on himself to show me that he can be given another chance? I probably sound immature, but I want him to fight for me, and it is so frustrating to see him just take it. I told him to leave the house and he just left. Told him to stop showing me he cares, and he just stopped. Told him I want a divorce, and he just said, okay. Not even a fight. Nothing. I could tell he was sad, and I've heard that he keeps telling people how much he loves me and wants to be with me, but he didn't even try to fight it. Yet he didn't mind fighting to hide his affair from me or fighting with his morals while he was cheating or even fighting to fit it in his schedule. So I just don't matter? Or now that it's about fighting for me and the kids, he doesn't know what fighting means. Now he knows how to respect me after treating me like an idiot and lying. Now he cares about my feelings. Every day that I see him, I just hope he will finally fight my decisions and say he's not ready to give up, beg me to give him a chance. But that time never comes. And I come on here and see people telling wayward spouses to do exactly what he is doing, and I just want to know why. Why do I have to be the one to make all these decisions when I'm hurt and confused? OP, I know you want to hear these things, but deep down, do you really... Because 99% of the times, those things are lies, manipulations, and gaslighting. To try and hoover you back in so we can put you through the same shit all over again. Look, maybe your significant other respects you enough to not bullshit you about it. It also shows that on some level, he understands. He's not doing the cheater's playbook of blaming you. He's not lying. He's not manipulating or gaslighting you, right? So to me, that says that he actually gets the magnitude of the wrong he has done. He knows that he fucked up. I know this is not what you want to hear, but it's usually the truth. The relationship is done. You should never even consider taking back a cheater. That's all there is to it. So please, for the sake of your sanity and future happiness, divorce his sorry ass. I hope that helps, OP. But do you know what would really help? You, considering to donate to me, your host Pat Sun. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my YouTube channel for you to watch absolutely free. So consider clicking that super thanks just below the video title or you can use my PayPal in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you really like it, make sure to subscribe to Patson to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.